Let's move on to drawings. Drawings is always one of those sections of the software that always gets heavy enhancements every year, and this year is no exception. We've got some really, really cool stuff that's been built into the drawing section of SOLIDWORKS 2014, but before we even get to that, let's look at one that they've built in that's kind of pre-drawing. If I open this part, we can see that we have the bottom of this laptop base. And what we want to talk about before we get to drawings is going paperless. And a lot of people are trying to build more and more of that information into their model, the PMI data, uh, so that they can use the model uh, for as much as they can without having to create drawings at all. And SOLIDWORKS 2014 has included some functionality um, for that. If we look in our annotations uh, folder, we can see that there is a notes area, which is a 2D plane, and that can store things like a title block, for example. If I turn this on, we can see that we can include this right within the model. But the greatest part about this new notes area is that it's static, it's 2D. So as I move my model, this information all stays normal to view, if you will, in my model. Okay, this allows me to build in information that's always accessible. Let's go back to the drawing. Some of the small things are often the most handy, and this one is one of those things. If I look at my view palette, I always like the view palette because I can get a preview of what I'm gonna put in my drawing before I get there. I don't have to try to figure out which orientation was which, I can actually see it. But one of the things with the view palette in the past was that as soon as I moved a view onto my drawing, it would disappear from the view palette, and that does not exist anymore. We'll see that I have three flagged views in my view palette. We can see that these have little indications, letting me know that these views are already on the drawing. However, that does not stop me from adding them back into the drawing again. So we can see that I can reuse those views right off of the view palette. That is a very handy new enhancement. In this case, I don't need another view, so I will remove this one and we can be on our way. Now what has happened with this drawing is I've set up this drawing based on a part and what I've realized is that I actually wanted to do this drawing for the whole assembly rather than just the part, which means that I've got to go back and, and do some more work. However, with SOLIDWORKS 2014, I can actually save myself a significant amount of work with this new tool. If I right click on this view, I can say replace model. And what replace model will do will allow me to take that view or any view on the drawing and replace that with something else. Now the cool thing is, check this out, it says new model part slash assembly. And this means that I can actually replace a part in a drawing with an assembly. Let's give it a try. I'll leave on my checkbox for all views, I'll replace everything in the drawing with this new reference and let's browse. My new assembly is this one, which is my laptop assembly, and that's what I intended to create this drawing on, and I'll hit open. As soon as I do that, it's thinking, flags me for a rebuild, I'll rebuild, and it has now said, okay, I'm ready to replace this model with your new one. I'll hit the checkbox and look what happens. All of my views are now replaced from the part to the assembly. Even better than that, all of my dimensions that were on the part are kept within the assembly because the assembly is now mapped to those same views. It knows where the part is in that context. It doesn't get any easier than that. Let's talk about section views. Section views got a big bump in their capabilities uh, last year where they pulled in a tool that will help you uh, create jogs and other complex sections. Well, this year they've added it to the edit. If I simply right click on my section view and hit edit cutting line, we see that that assist tool now comes up and I can add in a jog from here. So for example, I can add in a jog. Now remember, these can be linked to geometry too. So I'll select the center point of that arc and that lines up my section view. I'll say okay. And my section view is updated without any more work than that. Let's move over to this next view. Before I start working with this, let's take a look at what we've actually done. Let me open this part. When I open this part, 
It looks like a standard part, but look what we have. Only surface bodies. SolidWorks 2014 allows us to now work with surface bodies in drawings with the same confidence that we have in solid bodies. Let's continue on and place some dimensions. The dimension that I'm trying to get is from this corner up to this corner. But really what I'm trying to dimension is actually a virtual sharp. And in this case, with a virtual sharp, what I'll have to do is use my point tool and select that intersection. I've got to create those virtual sharps first and then dimension. Well, no longer with SOLIDWORKS 2014, I can do this all right within the Smart Dimension tool. If I right click on an entity, one of my options is Find Intersection. And what Find Intersection will allow me to do is select another entity and it creates and selects that virtual sharp for me. Let's do the same thing on the top side. Right click, find intersection, it selects, it keeps me in the Smart Dimension tool and allows me to place that in one step. Big time saver there. We also have additional controls for dimensions. Now one thing with dimensions is that we have additional control over the leaders, specifically their visual properties. If I select my leaders tab and come down to the section where we can control the dimension style, I can uncheck document display and I can choose a new style for this. We can see that if I select this dot dash, it updates. I also have extension control. I can change these to something that we can easily define. So we now have independent control over how exactly that dimension looks. Let's set a custom text position. New for SOLIDWORKS 2014, with custom text positioning, we have new options. If I type in some text, we have an additional box. And we can see that those two boxes control where that text lands. So we now have an easy way to format this text, which also works out very nicely for dual dimensions. If I turn on my checkbox for dual dimensions and say split, it now will do an over under split on that dimension. Very nice way to visualize dual dimensions. Let's talk a little bit about notes. I have a note placed down here in the corner. And this note is intended to be linked to this view, which is up here. Now, that's been possible in the past. We've been able to drop that note into that view. We can link it to that view, which adds a ton of power because we can then pull information out of that model or out of that view and display that on the drawing. Now the limitation to that in the past was that it had to be physically located with that view. And that limitation has been removed for SOLIDWORKS 2014. All I'll have to do is right click on a note, set to attachment, attach to view, and select the view to which I want this note to be attached. That's it. It's as simple as that. As soon as I do that process, that note is now linked and I can pull information from that view. Let's look at this note a little bit closer. We notice that this note says, this note is currently attached to the right, uh, the view right of the model, and is referenced to this view. It also says that this note should not move and should be uppercase. So we fixed that, so we've set it linked, it won't move because it's placed where it was placed, it doesn't have to be related to the view, but it's all lowercase. However, if I select this note, SOLIDWORKS 2014 includes a checkbox for all uppercase. So we can toggle this back and forth with just the click of a button. We don't have to recreate the whole note. A detailed view will provide us with an opportunity to take a look at the next set of enhancements in SOLIDWORKS 2014 for drawings. When detailed views are created, the note for the view is provided automatically. These notes come with the intelligence built into them, allowing you to change the scale right there. However, if you were to accidentally delete these notes, you would also lose the intelligence that comes with it. Now, with 
view tags, this information can be propagated automatically using special tags which reference the drafting standard in use. For instance, if you look at the section view portion of the document settings, you can see where all this information is derived from. Tags allow you to point to these specific fields, ensuring your drawing always adheres to company standards. With slots being a new feature in the whole visit, it's important that they are fully supported everywhere in the software. SolidWorks 2014 carries on support for slots in drawings, first with Cinemark support. Just like holes, they can be created and populate patterns automatically. Also, for slots, is support for whole callouts. Of course, we need to further dimension these slots, including their location and the angle of them. Now, when placing angular dimensions, it's easier than ever to make everything line up just right with new soft naps for angular dimensions. There's no more guesswork hoping you got it just right. But dimensioning every angle this way would overcrowd the view. Using the new angular running dimension tool, we can dimension the angle of all these features much more efficiently. And it's much clearer to understand. Just like ordinate dimension, you place the first dimension and then just click in the subsequent locations of the angle dimensions. Datum features have also been improved in SOLIDWORKS 2014 to make them easier to place as they now support placement of points instead of just edges or existing dimensions, meaning there's no fuss to get them where you need them. Now let's go ahead and add a simple note to reference that datum. While in the note tool or any tool that utilizes symbols, you'll notice a completely refreshed symbol library that's much easier to navigate. Sorted by logical areas, symbols are easy to find, and the new library even sorts your favorites as well, making them easier to return to. You might also notice that now selecting on annotations highlights any geometry they are attached to, making it easier to understand where a node or dimension has been attached. Let's add another sheet to place a bill of materials. You might notice when doing so, we are not presented with a dialog box asking us to specify a sheet format for this new sheet. That's because you can now predefine a sheet format to use for any subsequent sheets added after the first. Though you can also add them the old way as well if you prefer that control. Now, when we add the bill of materials for this assembly, you might notice that everything is already in numerical order in the table. That's because SOLIDWORKS 2014 now allows you to save any sorting methodology you choose in the bill of materials template, saving the extra step needed when placing a bill of material table. There's also now support for unique toolbox properties in the bill of materials as well. This includes things such as standard or specific of hardware allowing you to extract specific information from your hardware for downstream application. This bill of material looks and fits well on this drawing sheet, but what if it were to get larger and extend off the sheet? In the past, we could, after the bill of materials had updated manually, split the table anywhere we choose. Now, however, in SOLIDWORKS 2014, you can specify a specific row count in which to split the bill of materials. Even better, you can specify that SOLIDWORKS always preserves this even as the design changes and control how the split table will be placed. When we add several new components to the assembly referenced in the drawing in the past, we would have to make these changes reactively. However, in SOLIDWORKS 2014, when we return to the drawing, we can see that by previously setting the row count to split at, we proactively avoided unnecessary cleanup. And the drawing looks great as well.
The next topic I'd like to cover is patterning. And patterning can save you a ton of time in setting up repetitious geometry. Um, and patterning has been improved this year for assemblies in particular. Uh, if we take a look at the options that I have under patterning in this assembly, we see that we have a, a few diff additional patterning options. We've got a curve-driven component pattern, we've got a pattern-driven component pattern, and we'll take a look at a couple of these. Let's start with the curve-driven component pattern. Now what I want to do in this curve-driven component pattern is create a pattern for this component that follows the curve. If we take a look at this curve, it's a chain system that wraps around four gears. Now I've got a sketch in here that shows that curve if we take a look right here. Okay, So that is going to be my direction. I need how many instances I require. In this case will be 24. Don't forget with the curve driven pattern you have the option for equal spacing too. In this case I'll space them apart by just 9 inches. The components that I would like to pattern, again, is going to be these components. And we can see that once we get this in place, they do in fact follow the curve around. But if we look carefully, they're just staying normal to that direction. Never fear, we can adjust so that we're tangent to curve and get those in place. Once I accept, we will see it will add those additional instances into the model. Okay, let's back up. Let's take a look at a great new patterning tool. Here we have the pattern driven component pattern and in this case what I'm going to do is use an already existing pattern to pattern a group of components. Now in this case I'm trying to pattern this subassembly uh, around following where this hole is drilled in order for placement for these. Components to pattern is going to be this subassembly, which happens to be this one. When I select my subassembly, I can say, give me the driving feature or component that is to, for this to follow. If I select this, we can see that this will now follow wherever that pattern goes and duplicate that for the given components that I've selected. We'll say OK. And we've quickly extended that pattern. Let's take a look at another example of improvements for patterning this year. In this example, we see a single part. If I select this pattern, notice a new graphical interface change. Selecting a pattern in a part or an assembly will now highlight the seed and let you know which is the seed and which is the instance really nice feature that's been added there. If I bump up the number of instances I have in this pattern, what will happen is that we'll end up with multiple bodies that find themselves being cut by this pattern. We now have greater control over what happens with these. Let's take a look. Again, if I increase this value to say 9, we see these overlap and we'll create these bodies as a result of this pattern. If I say OK, we now have control over which bodies we want to keep and which bodies we would like to remove. I can select these that would I would like to keep. In this case, I'll just keep the main body and let the rest of these be removed by the pattern. We still have a single body and the other bodies have been removed. Here's one of my favorite sections of enhancements for 2014. Mating has got a whole slew of improvements this year, so let's take a look at some of them. Some of you like to use the smart mate capability of SolidWorks, and that is the alt-drag function uh, in assemblies. And last year we saw an, an improvement to that where they delayed the response time. So you weren't snapping to everything as soon as you hit it. So for example, when we slide over something, so I'll, I'll create a smart mate here holding Alt on my keyboard, I'll drag and drop, and as I come over these references, we see that I just snap to everything as soon as I hover over it. Well, they, that may not be the, the best reaction. So last year, they added in a little bit of a delay, so that you have to wait a moment in order for that to snap in place. 
Well, that slowed people down a little bit. And what they did this year is they decided to actually give you control over how long that takes. If we take a look in the system options under performance, we'll see that there's a new slider in here for SmartMate sensitivity. I can change this anywhere from where we just saw it to uh, all the way down to slow, which will wait the longest amount of time before that snaps into place, or anywhere in between. I'll set it to slow so we can see how that behavior works. If I do the same thing and I take this face and I'll drag that over, we now see that I can move about the assembly without really having to uh, have that snap everywhere until I stop over the face that I want. And again, this will wait the longest before it snaps in place. Once I release, this comes up, I can say OK, and we're good to go. OK, let's take a look at another mate condition. Let me turn on my mate tool. And what I want to mate is this guy to this guy. Now notice what doesn't happen. Typically what happens in this scenario is that I would select these, SOLIDWORKS would pick coincident, and then it would realize, oh wait, these can't be coincident, uh, and we would have to choose parallel. Well that no longer happens, SOLIDWORKS has built in more intelligence into the mate tool this year, and it should now pick up parallel much more regularly. We see that this chooses parallel by default, and all I have to do is say, okay, that's exactly what I want, and be on my way. In an interface change, we see that the mate tool now has a push pin. The push pin we find all over the software, and we know that if we use this, we can hold a menu where it is. So we can now dismiss or leave up the mate tool as long or as short as we need, depending on what we do with this push pin. If we see I have my push pin set, it will wait for me to either dismiss the mate tool, or when I unpin this and make my next move, the mate tool will dismiss itself. So we now have control over when that comes up and when that disappears. I will dismiss the mate tool for right now. Let's apply another mate. Now when I work in sketches, I like to use relationships by just selecting multiple entities and selecting what relationship I want those to share. And I've always wanted that capability in assemblies. Well this year they finally built it in and what we can see is all I have to do to create a mate is now select a face or my first reference, hold control on my keyboard, select the other reference and we see that those mate tools will pop right up. So it will open the mate tool in the background, allow me to select which mate I would like to use. In this case I'll say coincident and it will put that right in place. So we see very quickly I'm able to add in mates. So if building assemblies in SOLIDWORKS wasn't like Legos before, it sure is now. Let's do that again because that's pretty fun. From here, we'll put this in place here and we will say concentric is in fact what we're looking for. All right, from here to here. So now we can build assemblies even more rapidly than we have been able to in the past. We've got some additional intelligence that's built in this year. In the mate tool, if I take a look at an axis and a cylindrical selection, it will set that to concentric rather than its original coincident. This just makes more sense and we can see it still does the mate as I intended. We can get this in place. And let's place our nuts. Now one of the things with SOLIDWORKS mating has always been with concentric mates on things that may or may not really need to be constrained. For example, we have these mates on these nuts, on these bolts, that are still allowed rotation to spin. And there's always been controversy over whether to add in an additional mate to hold those in place or whether to leave that unrestrained. Ideally, in terms of performance, we would leave those unconstrained, but sometimes we would really like to lock those down. 
So SolidWorks has included a new tool this year that will allow us to do both. If I take a look at the mate for these, in this case I'll simply use view mates as it's the quickest way to get there. View mates has also been improved for this year. We'll see some of that shortly. Taking a look at the mates, if I modify this mate, I have now the option to lock rotation. All right, I can do this when I create the mate as well. If I hit lock rotation, what that does is that creates a scenario where I do not have an additional top level mate and it will still hold this in place. So SolidWorks solves that in the background. We don't see that. We don't need an additional mate. Let's try that over here. Again, we can access those mates from here in the assembly uh, or through view mates or we can create this condition uh, when we create the mate itself. Lock rotation. We see the icon change a little bit and now we have a condition where this one will not move and this one will move even though they have the same set of mates. Awesome improvement in this year's release of the software. This year we have also acquired an additional type of mate in that we've now got a slot mate. This slot mate is really cool because we don't have to solve for contact, it's all mathematical, but it still gives us the motion that we would expect in a slot scenario. So slots have really been improved throughout the software this year. Let's take a look. In the mate tool, if I come down to mechanical mates, we'll see that slot is now one of our options. If I choose the slot mate, we have a handful of selections that will allow us to control how this slot mate behaves. We can see that we have free, which will allow it to move within the range of motion that the slot allows. We have center and slot, which will lock the component to the center location of that slot. Distance and percentage, so we can control how much of the slot it is allowed to move. I'll set these all to free so we can see the range of motion. Let's make our selections. And what I'll select first is this bolt as well as this slot. And we see that once this once I pick one of the faces for the slot, it picks that up as the whole selection. Let's take a look at how this works. We can see that when I move the bolt, it moves to the extent of the slot, then stops. We no longer have to fake this kind of behavior. We can input it directly. Let's take a look at a couple other cases. Again, mechanical mates will move over to slot and we'll apply this to a washer. Except we can even do this with non-cylindrical items as long as we've got an access to reference. And we see that we have the full range of motion in each of these. This can rotate in there and it will still only move to the extent of the slot. We can push this even farther and apply a slot to a slot. Let's see how that works. I now have the combined range of motion of those two slots. This does apply to arc slots as well. For example, if we take a look at this one, keep an eye on this component here. As I move these slots together with the combination of these slot mates, we can see that it behaves as if it were solving for contact. Now again, this is just a mathematical mate, so the motion is quick and fluid. We can see we also have a slot mate applied here as well. Slot mates do have some limitations and we can see I have an example here. In order to perform a slot mate it will have to be an actual slot. We can see that we cannot have unending slots or square ended slots. If it's created with a slot tool it should work just fine. Next up, let's take a look at some of the new enhancements that has been introduced in assemblies. First, rotations are now supported in exploded views. 
adding these rotations make exploded animation much more realistic simply choose the components to explode and you'll notice that there are now rotating rings along the linear manipulator triad this is also an option to rotate each component about its own origin as opposed to rotating them as a group simply select this checkmark and now you'll be able to rotate each component individually drag and drop the manipulator to define the linear explode and then drag the ring to define the ro its rotation it's that simple to define the rotation of the cylinder we can now drag the manipulator without having to hold the alt key to define the rotation axis and then drag the cylinder out of position one of the best ways to communicate assembly step is to animate and explode or collapse and with the new rotational exploded step this communication gets even better identifying and changing configurations of components in an assembly is now much easier as they are now accessible right from the context toolbar they are even accessible when selecting sub-assemblies all these can be done without having to access the component feature dialog these configurations can be accessed from the graphic area or from the feature manager just by using this drop down and now assemblies can even be made flexible directly from the context toolbar as well without having to access the dialog the way the that the way that flexible subassembly solve has also been reworked so that assemblies such as this that contain multiple instances of the same flexible subassembly will now behave in a more predictable manner enhancements were also made in regards to mirroring components SOLIDWORKS 2014 now supports many more MAID types when mirroring parts and subassemblies mates such as cam hinge linear coupler path symmetry universal joint and width mates are all now supported these mates are added to the mirrored subassembly or recreated in the main assembly if the mirror component is dissolved thus saving time having to reassemble components In SOLIDWORKS 2013, when mirroring components was introduced, the opposite hand version was positioned using the center of mass. However, now there's an additional option to choose the bounding box for the mirror position. This is especially useful when mirroring sub-assemblies and you might have parts or components within that sub-assembly which is suppressed or unsuppressed. This will cause the center of mass to shift and have the components no longer lined up. Let's take a look at a quick example. This, has a, this sub assembly is currently in symmetry. But if I unsuppress an extra component, the sub assembly becomes unbalanced, and you can see this when I display the center of mass. Notice that the sub assembly was mirrored as specified by the center of mass. And you can see the center of mass line up correctly. But this is not what I want. I really want them to be mirrored around the center of the entire subassembly, not the center of mass. With the new bounding box option in the mirror component tool, I can now account for this and get the result that I desire. When working with large assemblies, it may be desirable to remove small components. In earlier versions, we could use the advanced selection tool to select by volume or mass. But this tool was not the easiest tool to use, much less find. Now in SOLIDWORKS 2014, a new select by size tool is available and works as easy as dragging a slider to select the component as a percentage of the assembly size. Once selected, you can act on them by hiding uh, or suppressing or even isolating them just like any other selection many users express concern that when they check the option scroll selected item into view that the feature manager never remembered where it was 
Well, with SolidBook 2014, you select an item in the graphic area, then pick an empty space of the graphic area, you are brought back to the previous location in the Feature Manager. So now you can have the best of both worlds. Assembly Expert has also been enhanced. Rebuild time is now reported in seconds as opposed to milliseconds. And we now list the number of hidden components, virtual components, envelope components, and the number of flexible subassembly mates. This can be important when troubleshooting assembly performance issues or even simply evaluating assemblies that you may have received from other users. Finally, the View Mates tool has been enhanced to now include features as well as components. Now you can see any mates that may be referencing a plane, axis, origin, or any reference geometry. This also works for sketches and curves, which, may, which makes it easy to see how the assembly is constructed. But it doesn't stop there. Let me hide this bushing to get access to the hole in the subframe. And you can see that I can view mates on this feature as well. In fact, I can even view mates on any face or surface. This is very beneficial, especially when making changes to components of an assembly. You will now be able to see which other components will be affected.